So today I want to have a look inside this uh, sharp calculator that I picked up the other day. Uh, I just wanted to compare it briefly with the Canon. Um, this works on, you know, sort of standard calculator approach. I'll turn the printer on. So, you know, you would go, hear it, you know, 5 plus 5 equals and it prints that out, right? Works fine. Works the way you'd expect. This works on, I don't know, I've heard it described as adding machine logic. So you'd go 5 plus 5 plus, that gives you 10, um, oh, sorry, I don't know if it prints. That's good. Right, so, uh, so here you would have a running total, right? So it's printing on here, I don't know if you'll be able to see this very well, but on here it's printing. The numbers that I'm adding in is keeping a running total here. You can then print the total over here, so that gives you the total now by, by pressing that. It doesn't have an equals key in the sense that you normally use it. Um, Addition, uh, multiplication gets a little bit complicated because it puts a multiplier in and uh, anyway. Uh, so this is definitely intended for, you know, like the insurance, the banking industry, that sort of thing. Um, whereas this is intended for, you know, everyday people who want to print in calculators they can look back. They also have different printing mechanisms. This is going to be hard to see. I'll see if I can show it here. Uh, this one the, uh, there's a little, um, both of them use ink pads to provide the ink, and this one has the, 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 the letters are on a sort of rubbery plastic thing that goes around in a circle like this. So if you go 9 plus 9, you can hear it rotates and then is pushed forward against the uh, against the uh, the platen, I guess, to to create the number. So so that's how that one works. This one is a chain printer essentially. The numbers are contained on a belt, and then the head goes down and in timing with as the belt rotates. Um, it prints on it. I don't have the red ink ink pad plaid. I've only got a, a blue one here. Um, I'll, I'm probably not going to use this, so I probably won't bother, but I would need to get a red one. So there's two, if you can see, there are two belts in here, which essentially function like the chain print head in an old chain printer. And then it has a moving, um, I don't know if it's a solenoid or what, that goes back and forth that then in timing with the belt hits, uh, um, presses them against the platen to give you the, uh, the appropriate number. So this is faster, right? So, a, so I don't know if you can see that very well, but you see the little head moves across and this belt rotates as it goes. So that's how that one works. Um, this one also has an electroluminescent display. And what I wanted when I was buying one of these is I wanted one that wasn't super yellowed. This one's, you know, it's a bit yellow, but it's not too bad. That didn't, that still had its paper holder, because one of the ones I looked at didn't, and had an electroluminescent display. Because those are the things that kind of, like, are, to me, what one of these things ought to be. So I'm going to shut it off. I'll unplug it and let's have a look inside. I don't imagine that there's going to be that much of interest apart from the electroluminescent display tube. I think apart from that we'll just get a single chip and, and the printer mechanism. And I am curious as you made the printer on this one. All right, so I will be back. Now here we are on the back. I've taken the printer cover off. It doesn't look like there's more than five screws here, so I'll take those out. Looks like it. One. Two. 
two. All the same so far, which is nice. Or M5. Oops. I will say this is not a current model, but it doesn't look like the current models are that different. We'll see if we can get this off. There we go. So what do we see? Well, first we've now got a date, 25th of June, 1996. And as I said, I don't think the current models are too different. I think the current models are very different. Look at this giant dip package for the chip. Let me read the number off of that. This is much uh, older than I expected. This is SC4049408813. It says 5M1. That's probably a date code, but I can't read that. Um, we've got probably the big power capacitor there. It's interesting that they've got a wire to hold it in place. Um, and we've got the printer behind here. That's the power capacitor for the printer. Um, there's a power a transistor. Maybe that's the regulator for the power supply. Yeah, that's probably the regulator for the power supply. And these some large some transistors here are probably controlling the uh, the printer. But apart from that, it's a single chip solution. But because it's 96, it's a, uh, because it's 96, it's a, in a dip package and soldered directly on. Very interesting. Um, so here we can see four diodes. So that's probably the, uh, you know, for the power supply, we've got capacitor here. We don't have any line voltage coming in. That's going directly to heat to the transformer. Looks like there might be a fuse in line there. There's something. Well, connector anyway. So that goes into the transformer. And I would say most of the, this is power supply stuff. It's uh, it's, it's uh, anything else? Not really anything else. Chips made in Japan. I would imagine this whole thing is made in Japan. What does it say? Made in Thailand. Okay, not made in Japan. Um, so this has got to be the vacuum fluorescent display here. And there needs to be a higher voltage power supply for the vacuum fluorescent display. And I know that there are three taps off of here. Brown and two. Let's see, how's it marked? Well, I'm going to, with some trepidation, take out all these little screws. Let's see. I'll need a smaller screwdriver for those. I did buy this for us to look at, so. Already lost one inside. All right, hopefully these are all the same. A lot of screws. I wonder what all these diodes signal diodes are for here. Okay, so let's see what we got. Okay, I'm going to be careful. All right, so let's swing it around this way. So here are the calculator pads. These are pushing down on a membrane keyboard over here. So that's fine. We'll leave that alone. Actually, I'll brush that off probably off camera. 
Here's our vacuum fluorescent display tube. Oh, let's brush that off a little bit. It's a little dusty. None of this is bad. Um, so there's the vacuum fluorescent display tube. There's the getter over there. This is quite a nice bright one. Looks good. And so not a huge display, but a nice one, good blue color. Okay, so that gives us a lens, you know, the keyboard is as you'd expect. And it is, you know, this kind of stuff. You just when you got it open, you gotta kind of just give it a little bit of a going over. It doesn't look like anything serious has been spilled in here over the years. Quite a few years since it's ninety-four. Just, you know. The usual sort of thing you would expect in something like this. That's fine. This uses, for these top buttons, the switches, it's using um, little contact pads here, which is interesting. That's better than the, than the wipers that run directly on the circuit board, which is common in small calculators. And here's the printer, and I was curious as to who made it, and it's Alps. helps, patent pending. This little spring that probably returns the something. There's it looks like there's a single motor driving the whole thing and there's going to be some sort of optical or um, or perhaps contact based sensor probably under here, which I don't dare open, that times it, right? Because the whole trick for this thing is timing. Because the, the print head has to, you know, has to hit that little um, uh, belt at the appropriate time, right? So I think that's it. I think I'm going to put this back together. I don't think there's much else to see for us. Oh, I want to point out, actually, you know, this is made just like a computer keyboard of the era which is why it has relatively nice touch. Would have been nice if you had ALP switches in it, right? <laughs> but, you know, it's got, you know, the stabilizers for the, uh, for the larger keys, which makes it feel pretty good. Unlike this one here, which is not a very good keyboard, but uh, this one's quite nice. Okay, so I will put it back together and, uh, and that's that. Well, thanks for watching this look inside a uh, 1994, 25th of June, in fact, oh, sorry, 1994, 1996, 25th of June, 1996, uh, sharp um, accounting type calculator. Uh, not much to say about it. It's quite interesting. This one works great. and. Um, Ah, I hope you enjoyed having a look inside it with me. Thanks.